did you ever read that it's possible to ask and yet will not receive he says because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your loss very quickly what makes prayer a prayer that is amiss i just want to talk about that very quickly number one the first thing that makes prayer amiss is praying without the backing of scripture praying without the backing of scripture is praying amiss sociological emotional lamentation is not prayer praying outside of the backing of scripture is praying amiss are we together because like you were taught yesterday genesis chapter 21 and verse 1 god does not do what we want he only does what he says so when you align what you want to what he says it will look like god is answering you but god is honoring himself are we together now and the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did unto sarah as he has spoken if god has not spoken are we together now the modus operandi of the kingdom does not allow that god does what he did not say so god's word precedes his action genesis chapter 1 the bible says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth now the earth was void formless and darkness hovered around the face of the deep then the bible says verse 3 and elohim said and god said light be and the bible says there was light and he saw that it was good so that's always the protocol god says it and then he does it god says it and then it is made manifest so praying amiss is praying without scriptural backing this is very profound most people assume that just because they are talking to god and they mean what they are saying god is obliged to answer them that does not work that way hallelujah there are many many people who prayed in the bible and their prayers were not answered once you do not back your prayer with the word you do not back your prayer with scripture you are praying amiss number two what makes prayer praying amiss any desire that violates the way the kingdom operates will not be answered humorously sometimes when i teach on this i talk about people praying that god destroys um, his enemies let god arise and let his enemies be scattered before you pray that prayer verify who is god's enemy do you know who god's enemy is god's enemy is not the person you hate god's enemy is not the person you don't like god's enemy is anybody who makes himself a consistent interruption to god's program even if that is you so when you pray and say let god arise and let all his enemies it is possible to be in that list You doubt me? Ask Jonah. Hmm. The fact that you fight the will of God, even if it's for that moment, makes you his enemy. Anything that is anti-Christ is God's enemy. Anything. Not anyone. Anything. Are we together? So when you pray with a motif that is wrong, that was the singular reason based on my study and in my opinion, why the prayer of Hannah was not answered. The goal was not having a child that fulfills the purposes of God. The goal was a competition, trying to have just like Penina, and it was not enough for heaven to move on our behalf. So the issue was not having a child. The issue was wanting to feel like a woman just like Penina because of the mockery. You would think God would be moved by her tears, and the years kept multiplying, and it looked like heaven was silent. One day she changed her motif paraphrasing lord you are looking for a prophet let my womb produce one she prayed once not twice once and the child came so when you come to god and say lord i want money i want ministry i want anointing i want this there is one question heaven will echo back to you why if you cannot answer that question why you will not get an answer from heaven because everything created by god was designed to serve his purposes everything created by god everything that secures god's attention and support must serve his purposes are we together 
so praying a miss number one without scriptural backing number two with a corrupted motif corrupted motif and then finally number three what makes prayer a miss praying without faith that means without the willingness to obey god there are many things god mandates that we do to commit him but most believers will prefer to go through the sacrifice the burden of shouting over heaven than to take that action of faith for instance there is no amount of prayer that will substitute for obedience there is no amount of prayer that will substitute for obedience if god gives you an instruction and say bring you a seed to your father in the lord and you say lord rather than giving him the seed let me fast for two days you will fast and it's just your spiritual life that will improve but that result you want to get you will not get it obedience indeed is better than sacrifice there are many many believers who prefer to pray in replacement to obedience and the reason is because uh, in prayer you just dissipate energy but obedience many times will cost you it will cost you to part away with physical things hallelujah the bible says they heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them not be mixed with faith can i tell you one of the major assignments of prayer is to help you know the will of god the moment the will of god is known you obtain grace to walk in keeping with the conditions that commit god once your part is not played you render the word impotent hallelujah for instance the bible talks about diligence as a requirement for greatness if you pray with a commitment to remain lazy you are not going to have the prayer answered at best god will show you two dreams and visions that laziness is why you are there are we together now yeah prayer was not supposed to replace the various responsibility components that commit the believer as far as getting promises manifest i think it's a mistake that is done in church there are many people who perpetually live walk in disobedience and expect that just because they pray it will automatically make that happen the bible says he that wants friends must show himself friendly if you're somebody who disregards people you have a lot of disdain for people pray the favor prayer you can as far as that will concern the answer will remain in the realm of the spirit because the human components that need to partner with the spirit of god you have ignored them and dishonor is the key that shuts any door are we together so when you pray outside of the provisions that scripture allows you are praying amiss number two when your motif is corrupted just to satisfy your lust there is no kingdom come contained in your desire there is no kingdom come there is nothing in your desire that glorifies jesus there is nothing in your desire that gives him praise there is nothing in your desire that sings his praises to the nations you will not seek your answer from heaven and number three if you are praying without a commitment to obeying god or obeying the instructions that will come from that prayer there are many 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 people whose prayer remains impotent because it's a waste for the holy spirit to instruct them in the place of prayer because when god tells them the things to do they will not do it whatsoever he tells you to do john chapter 2 he says to do having the readiness to judge all disobedience he says when your obedience is complete are we learning now so this is very powerful i watch believers sincere believers who love the lord pray dissipating zeal and energy and you can see the mistakes that are made in prayer and sometimes i move with so much compassion because i know that these people are praying with zeal albeit without knowledge thank you for always visiting our channel i believe you have been blessed by that message for more video like this do well to subscribe to this channel and also share this video with all your friends God bless you. See you in our next video.